in jazz, it's like, you know, it's almost like you've got to play a certain way in certain institutions and stuff like that. And I never understood it. Um, but people like Thelonious Monk pop up every now and again and they go, I'm going to play so differently that everyone else is going to follow my different playing and be themselves. And yeah, it's just, it's just inspiring. Rolling. Fantastic. I got into jazz through um, looking for records to sample to make hip hop music. That's how I got into jazz. So when I started playing piano, the only thing I was into was all the, just the new people. Um, so the new people that the um, Taylor Ives, the Gretchen Carlato, um, Esperanza Spalding, Glasper, they were all, you know, coming up and making music at the same sort of time. Mm. And that was the stuff I was into at first. But if you break these musicians down, their influences, if you go like Glasper, for example, you can go Herbie Hancock straight away. So now that's my influence as well. So I went to the sort of old school bit of jazz after sort of studying the, what the modern guys are doing. What I would say is that uh, without Kenny Clark and without Art Blakey, there's no me. That's what I can that's say. Nice. That's, that's politically correct. That's good. Um, so with me, I have huge respect to Duke Ellington, obviously. Um, but for me, it's Thelonious Monk. Um, just because he was one of the first guys I was looked at from back then when I started to get into the, um, say the older stuff, not old school, but older stuff, and going, oh, he actually, he sounds very different, like, and he's sort of allowed to sound different. The moment I got into the piano properly was when I was making a lot of hip hop beats, sampling a lot of jazz music. Then after a while, I hit a wall, I stopped. I couldn't understand what was happening in the music and it bothered me that I was just like, you know, the chords that I'm hearing here, I like them. I don't know what they are. I don't know how to play them. I, I want to make my own if I want to. You know, not just, you know, cut people's things. So at that moment, I made a decision. Like, I was like 17, I was like, look, I'm going to learn the piano, um, figure out what everyone's doing, and then I'm just going to do my own stuff. I know why I play this music, and I know the guys who made me, like, like wake or, or whatever you, you want to call it. Like one of them was Billy Higgins, the drummer. Maybe he's, he's one of the most recorded drummers in history. He used to play with everyone, you know. So that's maybe the first, the first guy that I was like, okay, I want to do that in terms of like freedom. It was not just music, it was more like a spiritual thing, like the vibe that was coming to me, you know. I think everything is kind of the same lineage and, and and you guys, you know, you were you were killing it tonight. So I was like, yeah. So so it's it's the same, you know. It's it's the same path, you know. I'd say my um, approach to composing and production is quite methodical in terms of like I I know things I like. Like if I have an idea for something, that's when I sit down and go, okay, cool, let's try and make this happen. But the real, you know, when it comes to life, is when I bring it to the band or whoever I'm playing with. And I'm like, okay, what are you going to bring to this skeleton of an idea, you know? So the real, I'd say, production probably happens there. But the composition, I just bring, I sort of bring people like sort of empty sort of sketches to, to fill in. And it's funny because, because you say that you, you got into jazz through hip hop. Yeah. So I got to hip hop, I, I, I got into hip hop through jazz. So at the end of the day, we're all here. And, and 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 we're on the same place you know yeah. so it's it's kind of like a circle you know <laughs>